maybe I will just summarize few of the things which are very important. In Musharaka, uh, Shari standard, the, the most important part is about profit and loss sharing uh, uh, requirements. Uh, like in Musharaka Shari standard, you can see in the very first, it, it explains all the different types of uh, Musharaka, the modern ones, the classical ones. And then it goes to the like managing a Sharika venture, then profit and loss. Okay. So out of all those, the, the most important part is basically profit and loss. Uh, the, the mechanisms based on which we can have uh, profit uh, sharing components agreed upon. So few of the highlights or few of the bullet points from this is that uh, we may have a variable profit sharing. So firstly, when we are talking about profit sharing ratio, uh, we are we cannot have a lump sum. Uh, like we cannot say, okay, if you put hundred one million dollars, uh, you will get let's say ten thousand dollars every month or whatever. We cannot uh, uh, specify a lump sum because that will make it riba. We cannot guarantee the capital. Uh, we cannot say, okay, whatever happens, you don't bear the loss. Uh, so it has to be, uh, we cannot even make it a portion or percentage of income of revenue. We cannot say, okay, whatever we are, we earn, we will share it 50-50. In a musharaka, that's not possible because most it's highly likely that after, uh, after sharing with one party, maybe there is no enough profit for the other party. Right? So uh, in order to ensure that all the parties receive their share of profit, uh, the the main uh, um, under the, the main rationale we have to remember in in when it comes to profit sharing is that we may have any type of profit sharing mechanism as long as it does not deprive a partner from participation of in in profit. So think of all the different scenarios uh, that may happen. If in any scenario it is a possibility that either of the party will be fully deprived from profit then consider this mechanism as invalid. If that's not the case, you can be as creative as you want. Some creativity could be like, for example, having a variable profit sharing ratio. So, okay, in the year one, it's 50-50. In year one, it's 60-40. We can have that, no issue. Um, and profits, by the way, are calculated after deducting all direct expenses from the revenue. So you will find clauses which relate to direct expenses. So any indirect expenses like if it's a financial institution then their operational you know salaries and uh, utilities etc shall not be counted from uh, musharaka expenses and profit will be distributed after actual or constructive valuation uh, profit distributed based on uh, expected uh, provision or expectation needs to be settled so for example there could be an advance payment of profit no problem but it has to be settled after actual or constructive valuation and loss will always be proportionate to capital contribution ratio. So let's say if we consider a $1 million capital where each of the parties have put $500,000 each and let's say they have a profit sharing ratio of 60-40 uh, where one party he will work and manage. So he is getting 60%, right? Uh, the other party which will be sleeping partner, he will getting he will be getting only 40%. Now, if there is a profit, they will get uh, 60, 40. Like if there is a profit of 100,000, they will get 60,000 and 40,000, no issue. But if there is a loss of 100,000, then each will lose the capital of 50,000 because their capital ratio is exactly 50%. And this is something profit can be agreed upon, right? Profits, uh, profit sharing ratio, we can tweak as long as it's Sharia compliant, no problem. We can tweak it. And we can agree upon a different type, a different ratio. However, loss cannot be agreed upon. Loss is always uh, proportionate to the, uh, sorry, to the capital uh, contribution ratio. That is something that we have to be very mindful in this Musharaka standard. Then in this same standard, there is also this discussion of diminishing Musharaka, uh, um, which, which basically um, applies to different types of financing, like house financing usually in the Islamic financial institutions currently, where to the financial institution and the client jointly own a property and the ownership of uh, the financial institution graduates, gr uh, diminishes gradually. So that's why we call it diminishing. Musharaka here means joint ownership. And the ownership of the client you know, increases gradually. On the other hand, he will pay basically rental 
for the utilization of the of the ownership uh, of the of the financial institution so that rental is basically the profit component for the financial institution so that's that's basically it now since it has a rental component there are few requirements related to rental which are also mentioned in the ijara shari standard as well for example uh, they they cannot be you know uh, all the all the risks uh, transferred to one of the parties rather only the maintenance will be the responsibility periodic maintenance will be the responsibility of the client as as a lessee and the lessor or the financial institution will have to bear the uh, ownership risk uh, like insurance etc so these are something um, very fundamental and also repeated in the ijara shay standard as well so i hope that clarifies the shay the standard in very brief this session was brought to you by taif and adil Uh, if you have uh, benefited from it please share in your social media platforms about both entities and share the word spread the word jazakumullah khairan 